Excellent. Good morning. Well, it's a great day in Montana and the sun is shining and I am uh, very pleased. We gave our awards out to our legislators this morning. It was very heartfelt. Seven o'clock in the morning, they got up for those awards. So that was that was pleasing to me. And I'm uh, I'm just overwhelmed with the support that public education received this session. And I know that the interim is going to be very busy for them. We know that LFC is also going to be part of our discussions moving forward and we'll invite them to as many education advocates as possible. We did invite the House and the Senate Chair full well knowing that House Bill 2 is being worked through in conference and I do believe the House is on the floor. So with no further ado, we uh, do have, as Sarah had shared, Mr. Taylor has got himself occupied right now with the legislative process. So Ken, let's just do a quick legislative overview and please everyone join in. You know, we, um, we do everything we can and I know we've got our fingers on a lot of balls that are in the air, but any, uh, anything that you can share as we go through our legislative overview that we may have uh, not gone into as much depth as you may want or we have might have missed, please give that opportunity at this point. So Ken, please. So, um, you know, I think the past two weeks and particularly for what's going on right now has been a lot of, um, of effort to look at the ARPA funding and, and add contingencies for meeting maintenance of effort, maintenance of equity um, and setting so that um, if, if anything happens, we're prepared for it in the legislation. So um, for example, House Bill 2 today, there, there is an amendment that will do some coordination. And that's what, in that coordination, I was talking to Paul about it very early this morning. And we both kind of looked at it and said, is that right? And so he's off working with people because it may not be exactly right and we may have to change things and all that kind of stuff. I also, um, a few minutes ago, got, a, I would say every morning I, I get a new version of 632 that is sent out. And again, uh, trying to make sure that everything that's in there is correct and that um, the contingencies are, are all there uh, so that if we see how the uh, different agencies of the federal government are implementing this, if there's a problem for an agency, including obviously the OPI, for meeting a requirement for maintenance of effort or for maintenance of equity, which is a, a new thing for us, um, that the contingency is built in so that we can't possibly inadvertently lose the federal funding or be at risk of losing the federal funding unless we call a special session. So that's, that's kind of what's going on. There, there's, again, House Bill 2 hopefully will get finalized today. Um, you know, there are amendments that are being proposed. I, I counted, I think there are a little over 20 amendments throughout House Bill 2 that are, that are in the process of being heard. There are a couple for education uh, that, are, that should go on today. One is for the moving of um, FTE from DPHHS to the OPI for um, the CCTS program. A second is they have inadvertently taken what we so proudly did last session uh, of taking the Montana Digital Academy and audiology and making them separate line items in recognition that these are you know, statute required programs and should be funded by the state as such. Uh, and it got rolled up into the main line item for program six. So having that taken back out again. And then the last amendment is, um, sorry, next to the last, there's actually a, a last one that's just come up today. But there's a, the third amendment is for the coordination of a couple of bills that were still in the coordination language and they've passed, so they're trying to get that done. But again, there's a concern that it may not have been done quite correctly. The last is there's gonna be a proposed amendment uh, to add $100,000 a year. Not clear if that's the exact amount that's gonna be moved or not, but to support um, robot competition 
in um, um, in Montana. Uh, and uh, the superintendent and I had a discussion today with two representatives concerning this idea and uh, certainly acknowledged by everyone. It's, it's really late to bring this idea forward, but um, it's something that is gonna be attempted. Um, so let me pause there. You know, I, I've kind of described some of the things going into House Bill 2 and the, the mishmash of things that are happening with 632. But in terms of legislation, uh, are there any issues that you guys would like to bring up or get updates on? Again, this is McCall. Can you just repeat the last item that you had mentioned? I think it was, you mentioned it right as the phone was ringing, so I just didn't catch it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm no a little worried about my phone ringing. It was Paul Taylor calling me. Ah! Um, <laughs> there's a proposal being made to appropriate $100,000 a year, it could be $100,000 for the biennium, but some amount of money uh, in order to support uh, robot competitions. And I, I think as everyone knows, there's a program in Sims, I think it is, that has done outstanding. Uh, there's some issues that have come, that came because of COVID and this is a proposal to try and provide some support throughout the state for that uh, STEM program. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, Ken, Ken can, you, can you describe the access to those amendments that you just, just described? I mean, I'm all over a House Bill 2 online here and none of those amendments are posted sure they are kurt okay. if you go if you go to that to the lfd site for house bill 2 materials yep. is that where you're at you have to remember to click over on the senate free conference tab okay i'll find it yeah you're saying they are posted okay yes thanks um I say that because I, I copied them all and sent them out uh, this morning. Actually, I, um, but there, they, there's an update that's happened too, but still they should be out there now. Ken, is there a way you could pull them up on your screen right now and we could share your screen? Yeah, let me look for that. Good idea. Excellent. I do know that the last one that he talked about with the two representatives, uh, Representative France and Representative Wendy Boy came late last night. Uh, through Julia Patton to us, um, but we'll get them up on the screen at this point. It's nice to see our congressional people here. Thank you very much for 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 joining us. And just as a um, foreshadowing, we're going to do another one of these on the fourth of May. So pre Cinco de Mayo, discussing again some more. Uh, not so much legislative actions, maybe some of the shakeout with it, but more of the ARPA will be discussed on the fourth. Is, so is, put my that on screen, your calendar. is, is everyone seeing my screen now? Okay. Uh, so this is the first one. And as you can see down here in the explanation, right? This just separates out the Montana Digital Academy and audiology. It's no change in total funding. This is the, the one that coordinates the effects of 30372 and House Bill 233. Um, and again, this is the one I believe Paul is working on right now. And the last one down here, this is actually um, not in the E section, but in, in the all section because it affects both BPHHS and uh, Office of Public Instruction. But you can see down here is the, what it basically does is for us, inserts Medicaid services to school director, Medicaid services to schools technical support, and the funding for those two FTEs. And I don't have in front of me the one from um, Representative Windy Boy on the, the robot competition. Um, but these are the three that are there plus the one, like I said, that I mentioned. Thank you, Ken. I very much appreciate that, sharing that up on the screen. Sure. Um, then I also want to turn to the, this is in our, our write-up that we sent out too, but just go through it real quick. 
on the ESSER stuff and working to try and get this all up onto our website and stuff as well. Um, so as Ken puts that up, we have finished our, um, our wrap up and our wrap up had about 141 education bills that we could track. Some of those were post-secondary as well. Um, Ken uh, has done a, a great job with what we've got here, this is going to be in the write-up that goes to legislators. And I missed the date. I thought for sure they were going to be out of here last Wednesday, uh, but it seems that they're going to be here possibly through Thursday as well. Excellent. Thank you, Ken, please. So, and again, I've, I think I've seen this in different forms um, that have been put up, but this basically shows the three acts uh, of, of federal funding. It shows the 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 words around it. And then I've got this table that basically breaks all of the three sections down uh, into the categories that were established for them. Obviously for SR1, the legislature did not establish these, um, these categories, but this is how they break down, okay? And so you can see here for the amount that's going to schools, it's actually a total of over a half of a billion dollars that will be distributed directly to schools. Um, a lot of this money that's down here will, will also go to schools like this second line of the, you know, related services obviously is going to schools. Ken, could you scroll down please? Sure. Thank you. Um, so again, these are the different categories and a subtotal and I highlight again the grant periods, um, the, the again summary that says that this is to prevent, prepare for, respond to coronavirus. And um, then mention down here that in House Bill 630, there is the language that restricts the ability of school districts to file for enrollment increases, but at the same time, allows districts to use some of their ESSER funding in place of the base aid that would have come from those increases. And, you know, there's lots there now that basically make sure that um, if, if there's a maintenance of equity issue, that state money can be added to meet the maintenance of equity. And same thing with maintenance of effort. The last se section down here is emergency assistance for non-public schools in ESSER 2 and ESSER 3. This takes the place of equitable share. Um, and there was $12.8 million that was allocated in, uh, in ESSER II and another $12.1 million in AR ARPA. And that program it has been set up in eGrants and we're in the process of accepting applications and should be starting to distribute money soon with that. Thank you. Ken, um, could you scroll down again, please? We're just seeing the original part of the document at the top. If, ah. you could, if you could scroll us down to the bottom, that would be great. And also, um, for those that might be new here, we send out reflections afterwards. So this document will also go out. And with it will also be our session wrap up um, uh, in celebration of what they have done for public schools. And then there'll be another one that's more of a final document with anthologies of all the bills that have passed that will happen in June. So Ken, are we scrolling down? I'm having trouble finding the control to tell you. <laughs> okay. Uh, my apologies. Ah, here it is. Uh, so are you, see again, are you seeing the screen? And there we go. Thank you. Let's, took, let's take a look at the chart that you had that does um, annotate ESSER funding summary for Montana K-12 public schools. And I don't know if there's any questions on what we have done here through ESSER 1, 2, and 3. And then you can see the final at the bottom, which is $593 million in total. Thank you, Ken. Let's scroll down to the second page. Thank you. So I apologize for that, realizing you guys weren't seeing what I was doing. <laughs> uh, and again, as I spoke about Ian's, you know, I, I think the, I'm sure most of you have seen that the Department of Education 
um, with the ARPA funds, published uh, some guidance and a proposed rule associated with the ARPA funds last week. And, um, you know, kind of unique to any of the ESSER funds, um, we received a grant for two thirds of the ARPA funds to be able to distribute to schools. Uh, but the other third is contingent upon completing a state plan. Um, and once we do that, we can do it. And that state plan is due by June 7th. And, um, you know, we have, we have embarked on trying to do that. That's gonna be a big effort. Should include in input from stakeholders. Um, and uh, Julie Mergel, I believe, is the person who's going to do that for us. In addition, and again, I don't know if everyone has seen this, but there's a requirement that schools also create, every school district in Montana is supposed to create a plan and post it within 30 days of receiving any ARPA funds. And we're also still considering what exactly to do with that. Ken, this is Emily. Uh, you know, the MTPEC partners have had an opportunity to get together and talk a little bit about um, the, those proposed rules that came out last week. Um, and just given that time is of the essence, um, I know everyone at MTPEC would be interested in jointly developing guidance to, to put out on that to help schools um, get their plans ready. Um, and we'd be happy to start working on that and, and develop some joint guidance. I don't know, I, I know the rest of the MTPEC group are on here, so I don't know if Kirk or Dennis or either Diane's have anything else to add to. I would just, <clears throat> I would just add that I know that schools and folks on the ground are eager to get the right information so that we can move forward and uh, with the plan. So uh, MFPE would be, um, eager to help. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kirk. Yeah, I would just add, and I initiated this conversation yesterday with um, Sarah and Cheryl Allen uh, of MPEC, uh, standing ready to uh, help prepare what that guidance is and work collaboratively with OPI um, with our full intent of making sure that um, the impact on the field, which I think is the same from the perspective of the office, um, you know, the requirements for districts on top of having to implement um, with the dollars, if there's a, a huge um, onus on report filling and all of those kinds of things that just adds to the pot. And so we'd like to work together um, to be able to provide that guidance and are fully prepared from the MPEC perspective to have a draft of that um, for OPI to be able to, for you to look at and collaborate with us um, so that we can get that out to the membership in short order because daily um, I'm receiving calls as are the, the other MPEC partners, as, as are you at the office on, you know, how can we spend this money? How much money do we have? Um, those kinds of things and the requirement now of a plan at the district level. I just, we wanna be able to make sure that we make that uh, in the manner that is complies with what the requirements are, but in the manner that is easily uh, accomplished by our school districts so that a whole bunch of time is not spent um, in completing the forms that are necessary to have all of that happen. So that's, you know, our two cents and Sam, certainly part of, part of MPEC is willing to contribute to what that looks like and do that in short order. Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. I, I firmly agree that whatever we work with needs to be in a partnership. The other part that you very much strongly stated, and I'll, I'll emphatically state it, you know, we are not going to demand of schools more so than what is even needed. These are regulations that are out for comment at this time. They're not even there yet. So I believe by the mid of May is when that they are, they are looking for these comments to come back. I believe it's upon us in Montana, very much seeking local control to support that comment uh, going back together. That might be the initial 
or part of the work plan that we do together is to um, enable that local control that we all hold dearly. Um, I've been in talking to other states and looking to see what they're doing. And your associations, I believe, are also very valid and important in what does this, what do these new regulations and then a revamp in six months look like? Uh, to take away local control, I think, would be challenging at this point. Let's hold strong together. Let's work for our schools and our teachers and the education that happens as close to our students as possible. So I know our partnership can be strong and I'm very willing. Thank you. Related, related to this, Kirk, and um, you know, I, I think a comment you had sent in to Cheryl uh, either yesterday or last week concerning when is eGrants gonna open and we'll be able to distribute funds out to schools um, you know, I, we may have miscommunicated or it may have been misheard, but in, in some of the MASBO things that we've done, we've tried to make sure that people know we can't distribute funds until the legislature appropriates the funds. Um, and so, but we expect that to happen and by appropriate, we also need the governor to sign it or the 10 days to go by. But for the ESSER II section, that eGrants module is ready to open up. And uh, we anticipate that'll be open next week. The ESSER III module, we're, we're still looking at, is there something we need to add to it because of these requirements that have come out? But it, if it's not clear, then we'll go ahead and open it up and, and modify it later, which could be a problem. But you know, the goal is to make sure that the schools that need the funds get them as soon as they can. There, there's no disagreement with that. There's obviously no reason we would want to hold on to the money. It, it doesn't do us any good, right? It's only for the school's benefit. And that's all I was going to cover today. Um, are there any questions about all this? So one of the things, just I'll, I'll open the door real quick. And I know I had talked to Lance last Friday. Couldn't let a good meeting, couldn't let a good week go by without, without visiting with partners. Um, in the manner of our very rural fabric that we have in our state, having the plans be the same for an A or a double A to a very rural school seems challenging. And I want to make sure that, um, and I know Dennis, if you're on, if you have an opportunity to share with us, what flexibilities we might be able to ask for with regulation or out to rule for any kind of conditions uh, for a waiver for any end size of a school so that, you know, we, um, we look at equity within this whole issue. We make sure that the masters of the legislature with LFC understand what we're doing, but also understand that we are a very rural state. So Dennis, any thoughts on having a one size fits all, or should we have different types of plans for schools? Any thoughts that you might have with that rural nature? Um, first of all, superintendent, I really appreciate you um, just initiating the conversation around this. Um, I've long thought that we should try and stop doing a one size fits all because we know that it doesn't. And, um, I'm convinced that it probably creates more burden, not only in, in your office and in the agency, but we, we also know in the field. Um, you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking that um, your suggestion about, um, is there an end size or is, is there some criteria that we could possibly use that could possibly be used um, to define a size of a very small school district? I mean, we, we know that there's 90 some one teacher schools still in the state. Um, and um, and I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but, but schools with enrollment less than 50, um, that's at least a K-8, we, we just know how small they are. Um, I mean, I, I certainly would be supportive of trying to do that type of a thing. Um, I. I I know that it would be important to find some type of a balance uh, of, of you know, what's expected of billings and what's expected of buying them. 
Um, I mean, Billings has the capacity to, to do things um, and yet Bynum shouldn't probably get a, um, get out of jail free card um, and just say, well, we want to spend some money. So, um, you know, I, I, those are kind of my initial thoughts. Um, you know, maybe even, maybe even some, maybe even more than just two levels possibly. Um, but I, I really appreciate you entertaining this notion. I, I thank you a lot for that. Um, I believe we need, it's who we support at this point, but I agree, you know, the, the, the strings that a double A district gets or the strings that a very rural school gets, there needs to be some equity. And I love the word balance that you put on Dennis. So we need, we need to visit some more. Um, and Ken, you had said we're completed. I see Mr. Taylor is here. Anything you wanted to add more about legislative discussion, Mr. Taylor? Uh, I admit guilt. Um, I was here late because I was mopping up some legislative amendments that are going on. Um, no, I don't really have anything more to add at this time other than the, uh, the insane complexity of how this session is ending up. Um, I wrote a summary yesterday of 630, and I assume I, maybe that's a bad thing to do that uh, Ken went over that. But if you have any questions associated with it, I'd be happy to attempt to give you an answer. Um, I guess the other thing that we're working on uh, with our the school finance division and then a little bit with MASBO, and we could bring you all in, is we're attempting to modify the Montana State Chart of Accounts so that it has the appropriate coding associated with um, all the ESSER one, two, and three types so that clerks and business managers can perform their duties um, and keep it all straight the best we can. There's a few things in there that are sort of like a, a little bit tedious and we don't wanna over complexify if that's a word um, this process for the people across the state. But um, with that, I have nothing more to add unless you have questions for me. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any questions of Paul? Oh, this is Diane Fladmo. I wouldn't mind hearing a little bit about the um, 630 amendments and where we are in those. As of now. Uh, yeah, um, I don't think there's any 630 amendments. I actually didn't 630 go to enrolling? I think it's passed. So I'm probably talking House Bill 2. My apologies. Uh, Whatever no we were just working on, what was that? <laughs> oh, you wanted all the secrets now. There's, there's no secrets. Um, no. <laughs> let's see. So this morning, the talk was apparently there's amendments on HB 303. And you, may, you can see those that are actually up on the website. What it does is it takes that class eight reduction from 100,000 to 300,000 with the effect that when it goes into play, taxable values will modify for dual school districts. Um, beginning, uh, geez, we just worked this all out. August of, not this upcoming August, but the next August. Uh, so those taxable value modifications would change mills for districts. Uh, as a result, the multiplier, because it went to 300,000, the multiplier for GTB is an increase of 4% rather than the original 2%. So what they did, or what I believe the plan is, and I'm not in charge of any of this, so don't, don't take this as gospel truth. It sounds to me like the intent is to modify this funding for 303 out of HB2, and I believe that's happening currently. Um, they're going to combine the effects of 303 with HB663, which uh, was a multiplier increase of, of moves it up to 250%, um, and then we'll tack on the additional 4%. And then there's a little bit of uh, money from the marijuana tax that would go into the state general fund that would increase the multiplier in 2024 and beyond. And so we had to do a little finagling because they're not directly additive. Uh, the one bill modifies taxable value, whereas the other one didn't. And so we needed to see the combined effects. And so if you wanted to know what I was up to, 
that's what I was up to. Thank you, appreciate that. Thank you, Paul. Any questions of Ken or Paul or anyone would like to add anything more? We are going to have another one and we're going to invite superintendents, uh, clerks, as much as our county soups uh, on the 4th, which is next Tuesday. And a lot of this is uh, just in reflection in a partnership and a relationship. We can't do this alone. We have to do this together. So I apologize for possibly more meetings as we're um, having graduations across our state and everyone is so very busy and we're getting ready for fiscal end and the legislature, yay, is leaving. But we know they're gonna be coming back. <laughs> Paul, I like the grin. So with that, reflections will be sent out. We are going to be presenting at the Board of Public Ed, McCall. And I know that um, Ken is gonna give more of an update with ESSER um, and uh, where are we all with uh, the ARPA dollars. So if no one has anything else to say or to add, I wanna say thank you. And I appreciate our relationships together because we're all in this for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.